tonight. No end in sight. India's doctor strikes continue in full force as protest groups demand better protection for medical workers as well as justice for the victim. Pushing back. Indonesians take to the streets to protest reversals of key election laws as the political strife within the country deepens. Trump on the trail. With Democratic Vice Presidential Candidate Tim Walz officially accepting his title, Trump takes to the outdoor rallies for the first time since the chilling attempt on his life. Sea Lion Summer The summer sun calls out for some basking at the beach and these gentle giants thought of just the place to go. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. is other there in a world news tonight good evening you're joining us on world news this evening i'm amasha fernando we have a number of key stories to get you up to date this thursday evening and we begin with the updates in neighboring india the doctors try continue in india as the engagements with the supreme court appointed task force is underway However, there is an increasing dissatisfaction with the efficiency of delivering justice to the victim. According to the doctor's strike, the group are demanding better protection. This mother is worried sick about her son, who is suffering from a brain tumour. They've been waiting in line with other patients in this New Delhi pedestrian subway, hoping to see a doctor. Cues for treatment are growing in cities across India, as doctors enter a second week of strikes cutting non-essential services. They're demanding justice after the rape and murder of one of their colleagues during a shift at a state-run hospital in Kolkata on August 9th. The case has sparked renewed public anger over violence against women. A police volunteer has been arrested for the crime and the federal police have taken over the investigation. But protesting doctors say the case is not an isolated incident and are demanding greater protection for healthcare workers against violence. On Tuesday, India's Supreme Court created a hospital safety task force to recommend steps to bolster security. Some doctors, though, said this doesn't go far enough because it does not address the core problem of inadequate healthcare funding and staffing. Still in India, at least 15 people were killed in an explosion at a pharmaceuticals manufacturing plant in the southern Andhra Pradesh state. 40 more people have also been reported injured in the blast. The explosion occurred at the pharma company Essienta Advanced Sciences Manufacturing Unit, which spans over 40 acres in the Achutapuram Special Economic Zone. District officials said they suspect an electricity-related fire. The local police superintendent said that while rescue operations were underway, the death toll is likely to go up. Local media reported that bodies of several workers were feared to be trapped under the rubble, while the force of the explosion launched severed body parts of some workers across the factory grounds. Essienta manufactures intermediate chemicals and active pharmaceutical ingredients. The state government has ordered an inquiry into the incident. Still in Asia, thousands in Indonesia have gathered to protest against their government's attempts to reverse a constitutional court ruling that would open up the elections to their rivals from smaller parties. Scenes of chaos have unfolded outside parliament as a handful of protesters were seen attempting to tear down its gates while others shouted for calm. Police also clashed with protesters who gathered in other major cities such as Padang, Bandung and Yogyakarta. Observers say the power struggle between Indonesia's parliament, which is dominated by the president's supporters, and the country's constitutional court could precipitate a political crisis. Indonesia's top court ruled that parties would not need a minimum 20% of representation in their regional assemblies in order to field a candidate. Yet within 24 hours, parliament tabled an emergency motion to reverse these changes, a move which has sparked widespread condemnation and fears of a constitutional crisis. A vote on the fast-track legislation, which would reverse parts of the court's ruling, was postponed because there were not enough MPs present. If passed, it would maintain the status quo, which favours parties in the ruling coalition of the outgoing president Joko Jokowi Widodo and his successor Prabowo Subianto. As a result, many local elections are expected to be uncontested affairs. 
And on updates on the Russia-Ukraine conflict, Russia says that its air defenses shot down a total of 45 Ukrainian drones overnight, 11 of which were over the Moscow area. The attack comes as Ukraine continues its incursion in the Kursk region. Russia's defense ministry said its air defenses repelled a total of 45 drones in Russian territory on Wednesday, including 11 over the Moscow region, 23 over the border region of Bryansk, and 6 over the Belgorod region. Russian authorities, as well as the mayor of Moscow, called it among the most significant attacks on Moscow by Ukrainian drones since the start of the war in February 2022. According to the acting governor of the Bryansk region, no injuries or major damage was reported in the Moscow or Bryansk regions, but in the Kursk region, one woman was killed and two other people hospitalized. Ukraine previously targeted Russia's capital in July 2023 when drones struck two non-residential buildings and a second time in November 2023 when Moscow was reported to have stopped more than 20 drones. The overnight drone attacks came as Ukrainian forces continued to push into Russia's western Kursk region. Ukraine's strike on three key bridges in the last week has trapped Russian forces as well as crippling their logistical capabilities. Russia subsequently built at least three pontoon bridges across the Syme River, but at least one of those is confirmed to have been destroyed by a Ukrainian drone on Wednesday. While stretched thin, Ukrainian forces are moving towards the goal of its land incursion into the Kursk region, which Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said is to create a buffer zone as well as weaken the Russian military. Meanwhile, Russian President Vladimir Putin continues to claim that the Ukrainian attacks are acts of terrorism. The same way we fought with terrorists previously, now we fight with those who commit crimes in the Kursk region, Donbass and Novorossiya. But the same way we achieved our goals in the fight against terrorism, we will achieve our goals in the fight against neo-Nazism. And we will certainly punish the criminals. There can be no doubt about that. And going on with business as usual, Putin welcomed Chinese Premier Li Chang to Moscow on Wednesday, praising the close economic and trade relations between the two countries, while there was no indication of whether the ongoing war with Ukraine was discussed. The search is continuing for one person who is still missing after a luxury yacht sank in storm off the coast of Sicily. Five bodies found yesterday have been identified, including British tech entrepreneur Mike Lynch. His 18-year-old daughter, Hannah, is still missing. The moment they had feared. This was no longer a rescue mission, but one of recovery. 56 hours after the luxury super yacht sank off the coast of Sicily, one by one, some of those missing were confirmed dead. Of the 22 people on board, those unaccounted for include billionaire Mike Lynch and his teenage daughter Hannah, his friends, the chairman of finance firm Morgan Stanley International, Jonathan Bloomer, and his wife Judy, lawyer Chris Morvillo and his wife Nada were missing too. The discoveries follow the death of the onboard chef Ricardo Thomas. His family have paid tribute to the kindest soul. <laughs> Working within tight 10-minute windows, divers have been plunging into the depths below. This remote-controlled vehicle has been beaming images back to those on the harbour. What were once drawings, diagrams and data poured over by admirers of the award-winning vessel were instead the focus of rescue workers. This is where some of the bodies have been found. A boat that boasted sleek design and luxurious interiors is now on the seabed. After managing to get access to those six cabins, divers made the sombre and devastating discovery of the people inside. It's understood that two of those individuals had been hidden behind mattresses. They'd been celebrating and holidaying on the vessel that boasted the tallest aluminium mast in the world. There is now speculation it could have been a reason why it capsized. The chief executive of the company that owns the firm which built the yacht leapt to its defence. The investigation into the incident is ongoing. Italian inspectors have spent hours questioning the yacht's captain, who managed to escape. They are considering the stability, how it was operated and the weather conditions. There will be difficult questions in time, but for now, very few answers. Let's take a short commercial break. More world news on the other side.
and on road to the White House tonight, Vice Presidential Candidate Tim Walls led fellow Democrats in a political pep rally, vowing that he and his presidential running mate Kamala Harris would trump over Republican Donald Trump in November's U.S. election. The polls don't show such confidence. The U.S. Democratic National Convention entered its third day on Wednesday in Chicago, a day after Kamala Harris was endorsed as the next presidential candidate in a ceremonial roll call. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz, the vice presidential candidate, will deliver his acceptance speech introducing himself to American voters as well as outlining his political vision. This comes two weeks after Harris picked Walz as her running mate, calling him the vice president America deserves. A campaign official said he has quickly gained momentum nationwide. Walz has a military background with the U.S. Army National Guard and experience as a high school teacher and football coach. Also on Wednesday, the convention is expected to emphasize a fight for our freedoms theme with speeches from former President Bill Clinton and former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Republican candidate and former President Donald Trump held his first outdoor rally on Wednesday since his attempted assassination last month. He addressed supporters in North Carolina standing behind bulletproof glass. Trump emphasized that once he takes office, he will restore America to maximum strength and return the world to peace, adding that he can achieve this with just a telephone call. Meanwhile, ABC News has reported that independent candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is considering dropping out of the presidential race this week and is expected to endorse Trump. At his outdoor rally in North Carolina, Donald Trump spoke behind bulletproof glass as new security measures are being implemented following an attempted assassination against the former president. Tonight, former President Donald Trump holding his first outdoor event in a battleground state since the attempt on his life. Trump in North Carolina speaking behind a large pane of bulletproof glass, snipers in position. The event was supposed to be focused on national security. If comrade Kamala wins this November, World War III is virtually guaranteed to happen. But Trump quickly turning to a different topic, former President Barack Obama's takedown in Chicago last night. Trump has spent more than a decade attacking Obama, including falsely questioning whether he was born in the United States. But today he said Obama was the one going low. Now, he was very nasty last night. I try and be nice to people, you know, but it's a little tough when they get personal. Please, again, remember, please, sir, don't get personal. Talk about policy. Let me ask you about that. We're going to do a free poll. Here's the two questions. Should I get personal? Should I not get personal? Ready? Should I get personal? Should I not get personal? I don't know. My advisors are fired. U.S. President Joe Biden, in a phone call with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, stressed the urgent need to conclude a Gaza ceasefire for hostages deal and pointed to upcoming Cairo talks as crucial. Protests for a Gaza ceasefire and ending funding to Israel grew larger outside the Democratic National Convention on Wednesday. An uncommitted Iowa delegate, Newman Abuisa, was in amongst the pro-Palestinian protesters and says ending fighting in the Middle East should be a top priority for the Democrats. Facing growing pressure at home, Biden has made getting a ceasefire deal in Gaza a major priority. A senior U.S. official on Friday said a deal was within reach, but a final agreement has been agonizingly elusive. In a phone call Wednesday, Biden stressed to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu the urgent need to conclude a Gaza ceasefire for hostages deal. Biden also reportedly said talks in the coming days in Cairo between negotiators were crucial in removing any remaining obstacles. This came after State Secretary Antony Blinken ended his trip to the Middle East on Tuesday without an agreement between Israel and Hamas militants. In talks to halt fighting in the 10-month-old war, Hamas wants a complete Israeli withdrawal from Gaza. However, Israel wants to retain control of the so-called Philadelphia Corridor, where it uncovered several weapon smuggling tunnels after capturing it in late May. A White House statement said Biden and Netanyahu discussed U.S. efforts to support Israel against all threats from Iran, including its proxy terrorist groups Hamas, Hezbollah and the Houthis. Iran has vowed retaliation over the killing of Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh in Tehran, which it blames on Israel. 
Israel hasn't confirmed nor denied it was behind the killing. The first group of athletes have arrived at the Athletes' Village, which officially opens its doors a week before the start of the Paralympic Games in Paris. A total of 4,400 athletes will be taking part in the competitions scheduled from August 28 to September 8. The Olympic Village, just north of Paris in Saint-Denis, is coming back to life. Delegations from across the globe began arriving Wednesday to compete in the Paralympic Games, with athletes moving into a newly refurbished Paralympic Village, adapted to meet their specific needs. The Paralympic athletes will compete in 22 sports at many iconic venues in Paris, which in some cases have also been modified to meet the specific needs of each event. That includes the beach volleyball venue at the Eiffel Tower, which has been adapted to host the blind football competition. The Paralympics will run from August 28th to September 8th, and more than 1.7 million tickets have already been sold. Ten sports are nearly sold out, but about 800,000 tickets are still available. Over in Kenya now, according to court documents, five Kenyan police officers accused of helping a suspected serial killer and 12 others break out of a Nairobi police station have been arraigned. Among those who escaped was Collins Jumaisi. He was arrested last month over the murder of at least six women, whose bodies were discovered wrapped in plastic bags in an old quarry now used as a rubbish dump. Police say Jumaisi admitted to killing 42 women, including his wife. Though his lawyer told a court he was tortured into making a confession. Prosecutors deny he had been mistreated. The escape has worried local residents. According to Kenyan police, preliminary investigations indicated that insiders had aided Tuesday's escape. A police report said Jumaisi and 12 Eritrean nationals were discovered missing from their cell early in the morning. They were thought to have escaped by cutting through the wire mesh over the window in their cell. Police have launched a manhunt. On Wednesday, prosecutors asked the court to detain the accused policeman for two weeks. That's to allow officers to complete an investigation into their alleged involvement. Let's take a short commercial break. More world news right after this. Welcome back. California is now home to a special beach no humans has access to, as it is all around by sea lions. The gentle giants take their sweet time basking on the beach under the summer sun as curious humans take to watching them lounge about. A beach in California is so exclusive right now, no person can step on it. That's because it was taken over by hundreds of sea lions, causing local officials to close it indefinitely. While humans can't use San Carlos Beach in Monterey, many of them showed up to see the sea lions for themselves. Some saying it's so rare to see so many of them at once. The marine mammals are a protected species, and city officials say feeding, harassing, or killing a sea lion is subject to a fine or even time in jail. They recommend staying at least 50 feet away from a sea lion for safety reasons, because they have sharp teeth and claws that they will not hesitate to use. Scuba divers have also been warned to dive somewhere else until further notice. A local marine sanctuary says the sea lions migrated north from the Channel Islands off the coast of Santa Barbara. But with a private beach all to themselves, will they ever leave? And with that, we mark the end of today's bulletin. Stay tuned as Sanu Imudan Nayaka will join you next with the nightly business report. We will see you again tomorrow with the latest happenings across the globe. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.